Here we go. All right, so advance the contact. This basic maneuver simply requires walking in unison with the line. It is sometimes not done correctly because some fighters stop once spears begin being fired at them or an ax is swung at them. And the opposing force knows that the front line is typically mostly men at arms, so they aren't exactly holding back when they strike at them, uh, simply because having a couple of frontline troops fall a step back as a result of coming under attack is sometimes all that's needed for an opposing force commander to call for a charge and uh, push right through. Advance to contact means that you continue to advance until you bring the opposing force within your striking distance. You can think of it as advance to contact them. Now, while you will get within range to strike at them, your primary goal as uh, someone with a shield is to stay alive and take shots defensively. What that means is that you keep your shield fully covering yourself. Do not peek or try to take combination shots at the opposing force. Um, what you need to do is, so even though you won't be taking the highest quality shots, those shots may move shields or weapons for allied pole arms or even better access to get some hits in. Uh, or even create gaps in their line so that your commander can then take advantage uh, of any situation that might arise. Feedback, notes, changes. Yeah, I think it, it's good to stress that in contact means your weapon can strike them. It doesn't okay. mean their weapon can strike you. Okay. And you, you touched on that, and I think that's, a good, that's a, a good way to put it. All right, we'll do. And I got a sheet of paper here. I'm just taking on notes as we go. So you won't see anything on the screen here. How primitive. Right. <laughs> Writing with bare hands. <laughs> All right, the next one, reform the line. So the importance of this maneuver really can't be stressed enough, whether it's a prolonged battle or in the middle of a scenario. Some newer fighters may instinctively fall back and regroup with allies. However, what you want to do is after initial engagement, everyone must quickly check their position on the field and determine where they need to go. The person who is closest to the opposing force or the mission objective, depending on the scenario, must raise their weapon, yell, or otherwise draw attention to themselves as they need to act as a rally point where the scattered allied troops need to form up on. Everyone on the ground around you fought for that part of the field, so make sure you keep it. What if they don't realize they are the closest to the objection, or objective, sorry, objective? As second closest, it's your job to let them know. Okay. All right. I, I would suggest that, and especially since we often know the names of the people that we're fighting with, that if you notice that uh, somebody is in front of you, um, I'll, I'll use Marin as an example. If you see Marin is in front of you, then you should be yelling, Calenteer, reform on Marin. Okay, and good. That way, Marin good. hears what you're saying. And she stays put, and everybody else goes to her. And do, yep. I think that's, a, that's the best way to put it. All right. Did you make all these animations, Garcia? Uh, yeah, it's um, Adobe uh, Illustrator Premiere, I think. Uh, they, they oh, don't let cool. you buy it. Yeah, you have to rent the program, which is kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism. Yeah, really. This one is a favorite of Xerxes to mess around with during winter war maneuvers to try to trip up fighters in the line. 
All the commands start out the same, so some may preemptively carry out a command based on what they think the commander is going to order, rather than giving it half a second, repeat the command out loud, and then carry out the command. The fighters here are already in a spears up formation. The command is given if there are not enough spears in the second line, or to let the, know, let the spears know to prepare for offensive actions. So when this command is given, rather, uh, whether you are armed with a spear or not, you'll want to repeat the command out loud. Any spears are to move up to the second line so that the line has a full complement of spears ready. The command that generally follows is spears in. You can think of it as spears going into battle. The shields make way quickly for spears to enter into an offensive posture and begin dueling with opposing forces spears. Finally, when the commander sees maybe a charge being readied or our spears need a break, they will call spears out. And you guessed it, the spears are to get out of direct battle. The shields again repeat the command and make way quickly to help the spears get behind the line and then rebuild the shield wall. Be aware that typically spears are not going to be looking behind when they, are, when they hear this command. They simply back up while keeping their eyes on the opposing force and avoid giving up a free parting shot. So make sure you take it upon yourself to physically guide them back in and don't assume they will watch carefully where they are backing into, especially if they are pulling back from a charge that was called or they are being chased. That all sounds really good. I would um, put a note in your script to not start the animation until you've already talked about Spears Up since that's where the animation starts, okay. is with them at Spears Up. So right before you start to talk about Spears In is, um, is when I would start the animation. So as you begin to talk about Spears In, then the animation moves the Spears into combat. Okay. I also like the idea of stressing, in means into combat and out means out of combat rather than in the line and out of the line. I think that's something okay. that causes a lot of people consternation. I mean, it makes sense oh, yeah. once you realize that that's, that's the, the direction we're talking about. But I think stressing that even more than you already did is a good thing. Okay. All right, that is the basics part. This is mostly taken from the uh, Calentier War Council website, which I linked up to the up at top here. Um, now this next page, these are some things that I've either seen us do or train on or things that we've actually had happen in combat, some of which don't you know, strictly apply to combat, but we'll get into it. This is sometimes called penetration of the center, and it's my favorite. This has been trained at Winter War Maneuvers and War College. When we train it, we make sure everyone knows how to do this because this is a basic tried and true method of breaking up defense, nullifying an opposing force ranged weapons advantage, or if the commander has decided for whatever reason that this is their best bet. In a more pre-planned version, you would use a squad of your best troops to create a gap in the opposing force center. This targeted area would be aimed at where the commander believes is a weak point in the opposing force defense and has a good shot of breaking through. After the gap is created, fighters would continue pouring in and roll the opposing force on both new flanks. You would want to avoid using it if the enemy has many rows deep as it becomes more likely that they can repel the charge. Uh, pretty much if your best units can't do it, then the rest of this plan doesn't have too much of a chance of, a, of success. That's it for that. That all makes sense. All right. This up what you say many rows deep. How many rows deep do you uh, do you consider deep? Ah, uh, above my pay grade to ask me, really. <laughs> I mean, I'd say three would be pretty safe not to uh, to avoid. What do you think, Logan? I was thinking three, four. That's when it starts to get you. You can knock the first couple guys out of the way or knock the first guy out of the way and kill the second. 
but if you have to stop and face a third or fourth, then that's what bogs the charge down, and you're yeah. less likely to be able to roll both ends of the lineup. Yeah, and I just was thinking that it'd be good to have clarification on that. Yeah, sure, uh, I can add that. That's, that's perception. Everyone, everyone looks at it different. But I look at it as you, you start getting a third or a fourth rank, then and, and that's mass. Right. All right. The big thing with the oblique order is that just like duels, you can telegraph your attacks. You don't want to clue them in by doing something like putting all your quick pole arms and axes onto one side or putting two extra sides, uh, two extra guys on, into a second row behind one of your flanks. Roles should be assigned before the battle begins and the fighters assigned to the attacking flank should be experienced quick and must get into formation only seconds before contact. You'd want to concentrate those troops on the left or right flank. The static or weaker side fades the opposing force, delaying engagement while, putting, while pulling back to the main force, protecting that flank. The flanking squad is racing against time to get to their targets quickly as possible because their allies are solely playing defense. And when you do that, you're living on borrowed time. Needless to say, if the opposing force is able to take out those fading fighters, then that would be a situation where you are then being flanked. Is that really oblique or is it really more flanking? It, it's, I have two versions of this one. This, so there's a, a general flanking, a single envelopment, and then there's the oblique order. I touch on that a little bit later on just to say that, I mean, historically, the oblique order is where you have uh, a number of squads or units that are assigned to one side, amassed to one side. And then single envelopment is more, you have one straight line and then you just turn on the either flank. But yeah, they're for us. Yeah. I think it'd be the same. Hey, hey Gustav, I just got a message from Germanicus uh, saying that he's trying to get in. Do you see anyone trying to get in? He may be away from his desk. I don't see a way to let anybody in. Yeah, me either. Did he make you host? I don't think he did this time. Okay. All right, uh, feign retreat. This one is tricky as no one is going to buy that. You're actually about to leave the, the field in battle, <laughs> field of battle in fear. So instead what you'd want to do is use terrain that might disrupt their formation. Uh, sometimes at golf, there's trees in the way or some melees have hay bales on the floor. So you want to use that terrain to disrupt their formation while you quote unquote retreat or in combination with hit and run tactics where the opposing force gives chase, weakening and breaking up their formation. Then the retreating squad immediately stops, closes, and then attacks that overcommitted line. That also all makes sense. Speaking right. of Marin. Hello. Hey, Germanicus. Hey. We were talking about you earlier, Marin. We were using you as an example. Uh, hopefully good things and not, you know. Oh, yeah. Bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. You were the rallying point of the army. Oh, well, that's yay. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're saying, Logan, this is uh, the single development, which is a type of a version of the oblique order. So this is another version of a flanking maneuver in the same vein as oblique order. The difference being that generally the oblique order is more of a set piece engagement involving entire squads or units. 
if you have a numbers advantage, use any extra fighters on your side to create a special hit squad to take on the opposing force from either extreme flank. Again, like the, again, like the oblique order, you want the squad to be made up of quick, experienced fighters. You want them in position quickly, but only after contact has been made, and then they carry out the action. The opposing force likely has experienced troops on the flank, so you would need at least a two to one advantage on the target flank when executing this. Uh, double envelopment is rare and more difficult to pull off because you might have guessed it. Uh, calls for this to be done on both flanks. I've seen this done in open field engagements and melees. Um, it's much riskier when it's done with more than 20 or so combatants. I've seen it at Gulf War, uh, at my last Gulf War, but as far as I know, that was more of a natural evolution of the battle where Kalantir just so happened to take both flanks, but I could be wrong. Hmm. That's it for that. Yeah, I'd say the Hey, Jay, I think your mic's picking up. Okay. So you're saying? I think the, the double envelopment is um, unusual enough to not need to spend a lot of time on it because you've really got to have numbers for that to work. Okay. So do you think I should uh, redo it as just the oblique order or just uh, maybe drop the oblique order and stick with single envelopment? Well, no, I think that, that you're you're talking about like like you like you said earlier, you're talking about two different methods, right? One is where your entire line goes out for engagement, and then you you just have overloaded one side of your line, as opposed to in your oblique order, where you've got the um, the in this case the right side of the line is actually giving some ground. Okay. Before the before the the enemy, and your 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 second example, you were basically just going out and enveloping them right from the start, rather than trying to do it with uh, an a, a specific overloading of um, of that one end of the line. Okay. In this that case, your whole your whole line moved forward, right? Yep. So I think that that's two different approaches. I, I think I've been a victim of the single envelopment at, at, at Estrella from other other kingdoms more than I think we've ever done it to another, uh, you know, done to the other side. Yeah. All right. So this one is a bit of a haymaker and and the opposing force formation here is exaggerated just for demonstration purposes um, I won't, won't know if I would try in a foreign war as too many things need to be just right for your for and your force needs to be on its aim game uh, you fade the center of your formation drawing in the opposing forces center getting them to overcommit and outpace their flanks and as soon as an opening is seen your flanks attack hard while your center simply reforms and slowly advances keeping the opposing force center threatened and preventing it from helping its now endangered flanks. That's it for that. What was that? That's all I had for that one. Okay. Any feedback on that? Uh, and for anyone who's just joining, um, I'm just reading from a script here. If there's something in the script that I'm off on, let me know. If you'd like the video to be a bit more clear in some way, I'm generally a newbie at that, but let me know either here or in the comments or afterwards. I can change it to a certain degree. I think, I think that, that one only, makes sense. Yeah. I, I mean, in practice, I think the only time I've really seen it where it hasn't been exactly like that would be when we start on a bridge and then we slowly retreat into a killing pocket. Oh, okay. All right.
right, so this one is another that might not have uh, absolute applicability to SCA combat from what I've seen. Uh, generally, in foreign wars, our quote-unquote reserve forces are simply standing in the third or fourth row waiting for fighters from the front line to fall to take their place. Uh, this might apply in open field during limited resurrection battles where, generally speaking, whichever side wins more battles during the allotted time wins the scenario. By letting your forces resurrect but hold, then send them out a squad at a time, directing them to weak points in the opposing forces' battle lines. You make the most of your limited resurrections and you, f and you uh, win the battle by using your resources just a little bit more effectively than the opposing force. Well, I think that's an important thing to stress even in unlimited resurrection battles. Because if you are resurrecting in groups and going to the most effective place for you in the line at the moment, then our people will be more effective and therefore less tired as the battle comes to its conclusion. And so we, we would be in uh, somewhat better shape to then uh, take or hold whatever the objective is. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't okay. limit it to just uh, um, limited res field battles. I think it's important in in any uh, to to talk about in any resurrection battle, uh, forming up in groups and resurrecting in a in a bunch. Yeah, that makes sense. So you you may have unlimited reses, but you don't have unlimited stamina. Right. Exactly. At least most of us don't. <laughs> Okay, that, that is the videos that I have. Um, other things that may interest some are, I have like a melee test, which is based on information that you would get from the Calenteer War Council website, which is again linked on, on this page here. Um, it's just random questions that apply to melees. Um, you guys oh, mind if cool. we... Yeah, I mean... And when you think about it, we're doing War College Winter War Maneuvers Tough, you know, twice a year during in one season, right? All right. Um, other than actual melees, we don't really drill it. So I thought maybe this page would be good for, you know, refreshers or, you know, what do you actually know? Is it correct? And yeah, I think that's a good idea. Other things I have is our, the different classes, quote unquote, that, I, that we generally use. And it's just a breakdown of the roles different fighters have based on what weapon system they're using. Uh, I mean, this is knowledge that you would get while just participating, but just something that, you know, put it to paper. And if you're new and you're just getting to a different system, might be a quick read for you. That's excellent. And if you guys could read through it and let me know how wrong I am, that would be great too, to make sure I don't, you know, spread misinformation or fake news. That'd be good too. Do you think you could post your, uh, your link in the chat? Yeah, we'll do. Oh, and one thing that actually got me into this is um, I was at Matsu's house and he had a video for melee tactics from some other kingdom. Um, and I just uh, transcribed it because it was, the audio was horrible. So <laughs> <laughs> this is, I blame COVID for it. I ha I'm pretty bored. So I'm just, yeah. But yeah, that's all I got for, for you guys. Cool. So a few of you guys got in a little bit late. Uh, would you maybe just run over your first couple formations real quick again? And yeah, that sure. Way we can catch them up. All right, so this one is advanced to contact. This basic maneuver requires simply walking in unison with the line. It is sometimes not done correctly because some newer fighters may stop once spears begin being fired at them or an ax is swung at them. And the opposing force knows that the front line is typically mostly men in arms. So they don't, aren't exactly holding back when they strike because uh, 
Um, anytime where they have just a couple frontline troops flinch from a strike uh, or fall a step back as a result of coming under attack, that's sometimes all that's needed for an opposing force commander to call for a charge and push, punch right through. Advance to contact means that you continue advancing until you bring the opposing force within your striking distance, or as Logan mentioned, uh, not their striking distance. Well, whatever's coming at you, you do not worry about it. You need to close and get into contact uh, with them with your weapons. Now, while you will get within range to strike at them, your primary goal is to stay alive and take shots yeah. defensively. What that means is that you, get to, you have to keep your shield fully covering yourself. Do not peek. Do not try to do a combo shot on the first shield person that you come in contact with. Uh, so even though you won't be taking the highest quality shots, the shots that you are firing at them, they're meant to move shields out of the way, move their weapons out of the way for allied pull arms or better yet access to land some quality hits uh, or even create gaps into their line so that the commander can, our commander can take advantage of it. So the importance of this maneuver can't really be stressed enough, whether it's a prolonged battle or in the middle of a scenario. Some newer fighters may instinctively fall back and regroup with allies. However, after initial engagement, everyone must quickly check their position on the field and determine where they need to go. The person who is closest to the opposing force or mission objective, depending on the scenario, must raise their weapon, yell, or otherwise draw attention to themselves as they need to act as a rally point where the scattered allied troops need to form up on. Everyone on the ground around you fought for that part of the field, so you'd want to make sure you keep it. And as Logan mentioned earlier, if you're not the person who's closest to wherever you need to go, maybe you're the second person in line, or you see the person who's furthest forward, you can then yell out, you know, everyone form up on Marin, and uh, Kalantir form up on Marin, make sure you repeat it loud, and that's where you would then form up on. And the other point about that was <clears throat> it lets Marin know, or whoever it is, but it lets Marin know that she is the closest to the objective, so she shouldn't move. You know, she okay, may be yeah. looking around trying to figure out who it is. And so by having somebody behind her yell, reform on Marin, then she knows to stay put. Oh, we'll do. All right. We're going to make Marin famous. <laughs> All right, next one. This one is a favorite of Xerxes to mess around with uh, during Winter War maneuvers to try to chip up newer fighters in the line. All the commands start out the same, so some may preemptively carry out a command based on what they think the commander is going to order rather than giving it half a second. Repeat the command out loud and then carry out the command. The fighters here are already in a spears up formation. The command given is uh, there if there are not enough spears in the second line or let the spears prepare for offensive actions. So when this command is given, whether you are armed with a spear or not, you'll want to repeat the command. Any spears are to move up to the second line so that the line has a full complement of spears ready. The command that generally follows is spears in. You can think of it as spears going into battle. The shields make way quickly for spears to enter into an offensive posture and begin dueling opposing force spears. And then finally, when the commander sees a charge being ready, maybe, or spears need to take a break, they will call spears out. And you can think of that as spears are to get out of direct battle. The shields, again, repeat the command and make way quickly to help the spears get behind the line and rebuild the shield wall. Be aware that typically spears aren't going to be looking behind them when they hear this command. They simply back up while keeping their eyes on the opposing force to avoid giving up a free parting shot. So make sure you take it upon yourself to physically guide them back in and don't assume that they will watch carefully where they are backing into, especially if they are pulling back from a charge that was called or they are being chased. And anyone who just joined. If you have any feedback for the scripting or the video, uh, you can message me in the chat or Facebook or just say so. That was very well done, Garcia. I appreciate it. Thank you.
So Baron, Manicus, any questions or any comments over what we've gone over? I I don't. I, I think it's really, really cool what you've done. Yeah, it's nice. And also you had the videos also illustrate some of the tactics as well for what's going on. I just got to try to put into practice. Yeah, I remember Ariel tried to do some video footage of the actual formations and things. And there's just a whole bunch of logistical stuff that got in the way. But and that's where I got the idea from, too. So it's been fun so what i'm what i'm hearing is is once your your budget gets uh uh bigger you know then uh you'll let me, let me stop your... you right there <laughs> <laughs> well the budget's got nowhere to go but up right <laughs> right <laughs> so all right so what I mean, obviously the small, the, the unit and uh, the, the, you know, uh, descriptions and explanations of these uh, maneuvers and tactics, um, you know, obviously, you know, you, you pulled a lot of this from, uh, you know, uh, the War Council, Ariel, you, you know, you, you, you were influenced. What is your goal ultimately? Well, for right now, I saw that, you know, all of our practices are doing a bunch of, you know, it's lectures on individual combat. And I think the melee stuff was kind of neglected just because it's hard to pull off the training for that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, put it in video, get that, those lessons out there, that information out there and keep us a little bit more oiled than uh, some of the other kingdoms, I think would be fun. <laughs> so let's hey, say Jerry. for it, you want to do a, a hit squad or a kill squad. How many people would you say be optimum and what weapon types would you want to stick in there? Depending on the scenario, I mean, you'd want something that is offensive minded. Uh, having someone in a kill squad that has a shield uh, with a Scutari, maybe. Um, but generally, it's going to be great swords, pole arms, axes, and those are the weapons. And then the troops themselves got to be someone who i don't know loves soccer and just has continuous stamina because they're going to be running down all these fighters and uh getting uh swarming them you know three on one and hitting the people who are just lagging behind so you know someone with the physique of xerxes or germanicus or someone real quick and <laughs> i mean i wouldn't join it so just to give you some prerequisites of what i think would be a good hit squad give you too much credit for keeping up with Xerxes. <laughs> Jay can join. Jay, Jay can join for sure. Are there any videos you guys would like to see? Uh, I can't do... The animation isn't too amazing as you can see, but it's more of what tactics do you want to see displayed that we that we do a lot? I know we do like the mad dogs rotations a lot, but I think that kind of works into some of what you already have. Mad dogs? Yeah, you know, just how you know th those are maneuvers. I, I would, I think maybe that wouldn't be a bad thing where you can show how the maneuvers maybe roll into some of these different tactics. Oh, I see. But, you know, like we'll do a mad dog and we'll do, a, you know, we'll, we'll start the wheel, but we'll also, you know, move one way or the other. Usually it's when we're trying to hit a flank. Oh, okay. Okay, well, that's all I got for you guys. If there's nothing else. I like what I saw. Um, yeah, if you can make sure that you post your your page and uh, uh, into the notes, that way it's there when the I upload the video. Um, 
that'll be helpful. Uh, definitely, I like I like the idea. You have got some good stuff here. Um, you know, and I like the fact that you know you saw you saw a need and and and, and uh, you thought you know that sounded like kind of kind of cool and that you jumped on it. So thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Any questions from anyone? I thought it was really good. Thanks, Garcia. Absolutely. Thank you all. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and next week, um, we will have Sir Martis. He will be uh, doing a class on footwork and how to apply some of the footwork to your work with APEL, which is important right now since most of us can only use a pill. Hey, Derek. Yes. I've talked to uh, Maj Noon about doing another session on stretching mm -hmm. and uh, basically warm ups and warm up exercises and cool down exercises. Okay. So um, we, we're going to do a dry run of it here um, probably next week or so and get it more fleshed out. But I just wanted to let you know that it's coming down the pike. All right, excellent. So thank you. Yep. All right, excellent. Well, thank you guys. Uh, we will end this one a little early, um, which probably makes up for the last one, which was a little long. And uh, I look forward to seeing everyone next week. All right. All right. Take care. Thanks guys, see ya.